Good evening, everyone. It is Tia here, and I am back with another video. This is another episode from our Passion Pour series, and I cannot wait to share with you all what is on my heart to release tonight as we are preparing to posture ourselves for. Come on, y'all know, y'all know, Dance with Passion coming up in September next month. Oh my God, it's right around the corner. Um, if you have not purchased your tickets yet, we are not sold out just yet. So you still have an opportunity to get in the room to be able to train with me along with other liturgical dancers who will be in the room. Listen, it's gonna be a phenomenal experience and I am looking forward to it. You can visit the link that I am going to include in the description. Um, if you're interested in going to be in North Carolina and would like to attend Dance with Passion, okay? Listen, I am back from my conference, and so we're picking back up with Passion Pour, and we are going to be back in the story that we have been exploring, and I have been teaching from, from the book of Luke, the seventh chapter, verses 36 through 50. Before we go here, I do want to let you all know, I want to clarify some things. I know that I mention things about analytics sometimes. Um, I do want to let you all know so there's no confusion. I actually speak to two audiences. So I post this video, these videos on Facebook as well as YouTube. And so um, the analytics side of things, when I'm talking about analytics and things of that nature, I'm talking to uh, my YouTube audience. And with that being said, Excuse the sirens. Okay, so with that being said, to as of yesterday, we have reached 223 subscribers because we were just, it seemed like we were just at 16 yesterday. And there have been some of you who are tuning in from the UK, um, South Africa, of course, the United States, um, I've seen people tuning in from Canada. Um, I think that's all I can remember at this time. But anyway, listen, this is just blowing my mind. Oh, Germany, Germany as well, which is very ironic because I actually lived in Germany for two years. So that is just blown, mind blown, blowing in itself. Um, and so I want to welcome you all, you new subscribers on YouTube. And I do see that there are some new followers on Facebook. So you all are welcome. I welcome you. And I pray that this channel and that this Facebook page has been a blessing to your life. Um, for the subscriber on YouTube who had reached out and requested that I do a video geared toward mine, you're on to something because you are the second person that asked me to do it to explain and do a teaching on mine so that is coming up i have not forgotten about you thank you so much for that suggestion and i'm looking forward to teaching about my ministry now i'm gonna let you all know i started off as a mimer when i was a little girl however my heart always gravitates more so toward liturgical dance but i do have experience and i do have a lot of wisdom to impart into those of you who do mime. I spent about two years really focusing on mime um, more heavily than what I've ever focused on mime um, and more heavily than I've ever focused on mime before. <laughs> um, and that was in 2000, from 2013 to 2015. No, yeah, 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 2013 to 2015. And so I would love to share the knowledge and the wisdom that I have gained throughout my experience as a mimer. However, again, I gravitate more so toward liturgical dance. So even when I do mime, you will, know, you will be able to see, okay, she's a liturgical dancer. Because <laughs> I always still incorporate liturgical dance elements into my ministry. Every single time when I mind, that's what you, you're going you're gonna to get a little, you're going to get a lot of liturgical dance elements. So I'm, and I am looking forward to doing that teaching and that is going to be coming up soon. Now let's get into this word, you all. I'm going to start off by a word of prayer, having a word of prayer. 
So will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. This is the day that you have made, Lord. And we thank you for another opportunity to gather in this day to explore your word, Father God. I'm asking that you will bless the hearts of every believer who is tuning in, every person that is tuning in, Father God. And that this word that I am getting ready to release that comes straight from your mouth, comes straight from your heart, Father God will stir up a passion in, in every viewer, will stir up the passion in every liturgical dancer who comes across this channel. I pray, Father God, that you will posture every heart to receive everything that you desire for us to receive from this word and let this word be sown in good ground, Lord God, and that you will send those to water this word and that you will bring about a great increase, Father God. And what is that increase for us to grow in our passion and begin to minister to you from a greater place of passion because of who you are and because of what Jesus has done for us. We give you all the praise and all the glory for blessing this word and for speaking to us. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Oh, let's get into the word. I am excited about this word. You all listen. I just feel a heart of evangelism in this season for me i don't know what it is i know i'm incorporating liturgical dance but this is coming more so into us um drawing ourselves to god drawing ourselves to christ and maybe there are some of you that are not a liturgical dancer and i do know that to be so on youtube some of you have drawn have have been drawn to this channel by the way of the holy spirit not because you want to learn how to dance but because something that you saw and something that you've heard has has touched your spirit and reached your heart and if you are not saved this word is still for you too and i just pray that you're open to receive everything that god wants to pour into you and i pray that you will draw yourselves closer to god and for you liturgical dancers Maybe this is not a, a word of evangelism for you, but this is a word to, to draw you closer to God, to, to get you to a place where you begin to pour even more on the heart, on the feet of God with your worship, with your adoration, with your love and your sincerity as you dance with passion. And that this word will release a fresh oil over your life. As you come into the knowledge and even greater knowledge of Jesus and maybe this word is reminding you of all that we have in Jesus either way I believe in my heart that this is a word for you this is the word for everybody that is led to join this channel or this Facebook page so let's get into this word Luke 7 the seventh chapter verses 36 through 50. So the last time we were together, I was telling you about how this woman, she, um, she was faced with a Pharisee who had a very critical spirit of her. And what I loved about this woman is that her focus was more so on Jesus that she even overlooked what was going on with this man. <laughs> The thing is, though, the great thing about it is, although her heart was centered on Jesus and focused on him, Jesus peeped game. He was able to discern, excuse me, he was able to discern exactly what was going on with this man and the conversation that he was having within himself about this woman. And that conversation was coming from a very critical spirit, a spirit of condemnation. And as I begin to meditate on this word and as I begin to pray and ask God to give me what uh, he wanted me to share in this particular, this particular session, a heart of gratitude began to come over me. I began to think on those moments where I was overcoming the feeling of condemnation and where I was overcoming just a lot of some criticism, just some things, you know how we look back over our life and I just begin to say, thank you, God, 
because as I begin to reflect on um, my particular process, I was able to go back and see how God loved on me, how God received me. And because of God receiving me and because of the love of Christ, it drew me closer. I was drawn closer to the heart of God. And as I drew closer to the heart of God, there was no room to be distracted by anything else because his, his love was so magnificent. Like his love for me, and maybe magnificent is not the word. Maybe it was just his love was, was so dominant. Like it just took over everything that I had been facing, everything that I had felt at that particular or those particular seasons of my life. And as I was reading and going in, in, in this particular story a little bit deeper, I began to see the heart that this woman had. And Jesus begins to talk about her heart posture toward him. And tonight I was led in all of this to talk about a heart, having a heart of gratitude, having a heart of gratitude because we cannot minister from a place of passion we cannot love God with a, a from a place of passion if we don't first come with him come to him with a heart of gratitude So in the last session, and I'm looking at my notes right here. I'm looking at the word of God. I want to stay on topic. But from the last session, I was telling you all of how this woman pressed her way into this Pharisee's house just to get to Jesus. And she began to pour out on him. And she began to weep at his feet. And she began to she began to wipe his feet with her with her hair. And she began to kiss his feet and she poured perfume on them. But we know that this Pharisee said within himself if this man were a prophet he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is that she is a sinner tonight we're going to focus on jesus's response to that in verse 40 the word of god says jesus answered him simon I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owe money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii. I believe I'm saying that right. And the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, said Jesus. Listen to this. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house you did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet, she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she had poured perfume. She has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Jesus said to the woman, and I skipped down to verse 50. 
He said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. What I love about this is that Jesus could have went so hard for this man. He could have came for this man hard. But he dealt with him with the wisdom and he dealt with him with mercy. Okay? Because here you have the person that, that, take, that came to take away the sin of the world who had every right at that moment to condemn him. But he used this as a moment to, to, to bring about a conversation that will cause the man to examine his heart. And, and, and this through this conversation, I believe that Jesus's goal was also to get this man to see this woman from a correct perspective, not a judgmental one, not a condemning one, not a one, a one, uh, a perception of criticism and judging this woman because of the sins that she committed. He wanted to this man to examine the perspective that he had from this one uh, of this woman. This woman showed a great love for Jesus by these gestures and these acts she showed love first of all she came a distance just to see him she poured out her all onto the feet of jesus because this woman had a heart of gratitude she understood i believe who jesus was and she said to herself i need to get to jesus I know that he is the one in all of my things that I've done and all of my shame and all of the sinful things that I've done. I know I've heard about him. I know him and I believe him to be a man that will receive me for who I am. And because he has that heart to receive me for who I am, I'm going to pour out everything to him because he's come to take away my sins and my shame and my guilt and not condemn me even though I deserve it. I'm going to pour my heart out to him. I'm going to give him everything I have. No matter how it is that I feel in this moment. I'm going to pour out my all into Jesus. Because I have a, 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 a revelation of who he is. And I believe for the liturgical dancer. For every believer. We have to get to a place. Where we understand who Jesus is. And we begin to appreciate when we actually appreciate what he's done for us. Because when we get in that place where we begin to acknowledge Jesus for who he is and we understand the magnitude of what Jesus did for us when he came here, when he suffered, when, when he took on that of lifestyle of a servant where he was beaten and where he was spat on and where he was publicly humiliated and shamed he did it for us he did it so that we can be whole he did it did it so that we can have a right relationship with god and we can be restored so that we can have an opportunity to spend the rest of our lives with him and receive him as the savior that he is and it's at that place where we appreciate and when we understand him, who he is and what he's done for us, that we take on a heart of gratitude. And it is that heart of gratitude that enables us to be able to get in that place just like this woman did, where we're not caring about what people think about us. We're not caring about what we look like, but we're able to give our all unto him in all sincerity we're able to to worship him we're able to get into that place of humility where we understand god i'm worshiping you jesus i'm giving my all to you because i understand that you are the one who forgives my sins i understand that you are the one who receives me and you accept me for who i am when you have every right to 
condemn me, whenever you have a right to judge me, but instead you call me closer to you by your kindness, by your love, by your compassion, by your forgiveness. And then you enable me to be able to, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth and, and to express myself in, in my level of worship and my level of gratitude and appreciation and praise through liturgical dance. When we understand and we accept, when we look back over our lives, we understand where we used to be. For us that who, who lived a while, when we understand that yes, I may have done this in the past, I may have not always lived a righteous life. <laughs> and through that, going back over our lives, looking over our past and looking over the shortcomings that we made and, and we're able to see God in those places, show how he showed mercy toward us how we sent people into our lives to love us back to a place of wholeness. How we sent people into our lives to say, baby, I know you made a mistake, but God loves you. Our love for God grows. Because if anybody should have been judgmental, if anybody had a right to criticize, surely it wasn't this Pharisee. It was Jesus, because only he could take away the sins of the world. God wants us to have, to, he wants us to look back over our lives and think about where we were when Jesus saved us. Think about where we were when the Holy Spirit was beckoning us, when he was drawing us to come to Jesus. And when we look back, we'll see that God has always been there. When I look back over my life, you know, some people don't understand, may not understand why I dance the way that I do. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest. I give my all every single time. Because I have an understanding. When I look back over my life, I have not always been saved and I had not always danced for Jesus. Okay? Let me just make that plain. Because I remember my freshman year in 2010, baby girl was at the club on college. It was Thursdays at the time. And I was all the way in a different state because I went out of state for college my freshman year at HBCU. At the club on Thursdays at the club on Saturdays, you know what I mean? Like on the first person on the dance floor, the last person to get off of it, okay? And so I know what God saved me from. And in my mind, if I can go out in the world and do all of those things, you know, and be at the club, just straight up wowing, <laughs> okay? Um, be at the club, and how God covered me, you know what I mean? Even though I was not even thinking about God. You know, I was at the club doing my thing, getting down, okay? Won't well, tired for nothing. Left the club at around 2 in the morning, okay? Let me just be real about mine. And I gave it my all when I was at the club. I ain't even going to sit up here and act like it was a miserable life. Listen. Okay. And now when God reached, when I look back over my life and how in that time, the Holy Spirit began to touch my heart. And that's when I became sorrowful of the lifestyle that I was living in at that time. 
God began to draw me closer to him. And I remember the turning point for me. I was invited. I don't even, God is just, he's funny. Okay. Um, so I was invited to, it was like a celebrity event on campus. And when I say celebrity event, I'm specifically talking about um, celebrity models from the Atlanta, Georgia area. And I remember this one particular, okay, so I was invited to dance and specifically praise dance because at that time I had been doing different styles of dance. But I was invited to specifically do a praise dance at that time. And I remember I was ministering to Kurt Franklin, one of Kurt Franklin's songs. And after I danced, this model came from Atlanta, Georgia. She came up to me and she said, wow. And she said something along the lines after that, you really touched my heart. My heart was touched whenever you were dancing. And she asked me questions of how long I had been dancing. And she said, please don't stop doing that. You know, please keep, keep dancing. And that was a seed that was deposited into my heart. Because at that time I had been doing choreography and it was not Christian dance. Okay. <laughs> it was like a lot of pop and more so like hip hop, but I wasn't very, very worldly. Let me just put it that way. But at that moment, that was a redefining moment. That was a moment where a seed was planted in me. And this person was not saved, by the way, at the time. But there was a seed that was deposited into me. And ever since that moment, me having that conversation with that, that, um, that model, I began to desire to give myself over back to God again. And then I had an encounter with God at about three o'clock in the morning. Y'all somewhere with, hey, I had no business being. But anyway, <laughs> God with his merciful self, when I look back over my life, he had a, a right and a reason to just toss me aside. Like, she's a sinner. You know, like this man was condemning this woman, but he did not do that. With love and kindness, he drew me. And I ministered the way that I do because I have a revelation of the goodness of God and his love for me, his kindness toward me. He did not criticize me. He did not judge me. And when he sent people into my life, they treated me in alignment and in, a, in accordance with the love that God had for me. I was able to see the love of God physically through them because they loved on me, they received me, they encouraged me, just as I'm encouraging you tonight to let you know that God loves you. And this is the season where we don't just receive the love of God, but that we pour out love for God. And it first starts with having a heart of gratitude. See, this thing is not just about dance. God wants us to be in love with him. He wants that to be our why, our why behind why we do what we do. Because we love him, we appreciate him. And check this out. Jesus said to that man, who do you think would love? How did he say, love him more? The, the, the person that was owed money. The man responded, the one with the greater debt. I pause there because I want you to think about that. If you have ever suffered or if you've ever experienced someone, maybe 
judging you or condemning you or criticizing you, a lot of the times, and I'm getting into my content for the next session, but a lot of the times it's because they forgot. They forgot about their sin or they feel like, oh, well, my sin was little compared to hers and little compared to his. So I'm better than that person. They're not worthy. I'm more deserving. But the Bible says that the person that realizes that their sin was great, <laughs> they love him more. So the reflection of your love that you poured out to him, to Jesus, is a reflection of you coming into the knowledge of how much God forgave you, gave you. When you understand the amount of sin that we had, we were all in the same boat and there's nothing that we could do on our own to get out of the debt that we owe God. Jesus had to come down and make it right. When we understand that and we see that this is love, we're like, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give my all back to God. I'm going to love on him. I'm going to give my all to him just like he gave his all to me. This is the season for that. This is the hour for that. God is calling people who really want his heart. God is calling for people in this season and in this generation who sincerely love him, not for what they can get out of it, not for what they can do for God and how much they can be seen, but just because God loves them. The Bible says that, um, I believe this is in the book of John, we love him because he first loved us. God just wants us to appreciate the love that he has for us and in return, give that love back over to him through our worship, through our praise, through our dance. And so if you are a liturgical dancer, I want to encourage you, don't let anybody stop you from worshiping God because of their misperception of you. God loves you. And people's perception of you would no longer be a hindrance. Your mistakes, your past, the spirit of condemnation would no longer be a hindrance between you and your love and your worship and devotion to God. God is doing a new thing inside of your heart. You're going to minister from a place of passion. Why? Because you're going to have a gratitude for what Jesus has done for you. And in return of what Jesus has done for you, you're going to give him your all. Maybe you are one on YouTube because I already, I know that some of you, you subscribe to the channel you're not even a liturgical dancer, but I want to encourage you. If you don't know Jesus, this, this, this man, this savior that I've been talking about, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Sometimes we try to distance ourselves from the way, from God's love because we think that we're not worthy of him or we think that we've messed up or we made so many mistakes or we feel that, that sense of, uh, that, that lack of worth. We say, you know, how could God receive somebody like me? I didn't grow up in church or I left the church, whatever your testimony, whatever your story is, I want to let you know that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. So if you're not saved, guess what? He died for you too. 
and he didn't go through all of that trouble of getting going through public humiliation and being mocked and being beat and, and his flesh torn. He didn't go through all of that not to receive you. He did it because he loved you. And he wanted to provide an opportunity for you to receive him. Will you receive him into your heart today by making him your Lord and Savior? And all you have to do is confess that you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and invite him into your heart. Get, let him know that you want to make an exchange today where you surrender your life to him and make him your personal Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart that God raised him for the, from the dead, meaning that Jesus walked this earth, he lived, he died, and he now he lives. You shall be saved. It's just that simple. He doesn't make it difficult. He loves you. So I don't know what draw you, drew you to this channel. Maybe it was a word of encouragement like this. Maybe there was a, maybe a dance that God placed upon my heart to share on the channel and you were drawn to it because it's something that you needed to hear in that particular moment or that particular circumstance or season in your life. But the reality is you're here now and you're listening to this word because this is a divine moment that God arranged just for you because he loves you. And my prayer is that you receive him on tonight. I don't have much tonight. That's all I have. That's all I have. I just feel the peace of God. Ooh, which, you know what? God is so good. It's interesting that I said that because in verse 50, Jesus said to that woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So I'm going to go back to this person that God is leading to receive him on tonight, to receive Jesus on tonight. All it takes is your faith. Faith to believe in that confession that you made. That is what's going to save you. Your faith in Jesus. So you're going in peace on tonight if that's you. Why? Because Jesus has wiped away all of that condemnation. He's wiped away. He's wiping away all of that shame. He's wiping away all of the guilt from your past. He's wiping away all of your shortcomings. Why? Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and old things are passed away and all things are new. All things are being made new in your life as you surrender over to God. He's going to give you a fresh start. He's going to begin to show you the plans and the purposes that he has for your life. The Bible says that the plans and the purposes that he has for your life are of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. So when you give your life over to God, he, he begins to show you this hope that you have in him by revealing to you the plan and the purposes that he has for your life. You are not a mistake. You're not worthless. In reality, God died for you because he said, he said within himself, you're worthy. Because you're created in the image of God. I just couldn't let that go. Somebody needs to receive him on tonight. I know this is a liturgical dance channel, YouTube. I know. Facebook, I know. Most of you on Facebook, I do know, are dancers, but... At the end of the day, if God is leading me, I am going, I have to stay here because he's ministering to your heart. He has an amazing plan for us all. And so I just thank him for visiting us on tonight and for speaking to us. Oh, my heart is so full and I pray the same for you. You all, we're getting closer and closer 
to September. If you have not registered, you are a liturgical dancer. You need to be in the room, okay? Be in the room, okay? I'm telling you, take it from the last post where people were giving their testimonials. Be in the room. I believe God is going to do something special. My prayer has been that God will send who's supposed to be in the room. No matter how many people it is. I don't, even if it's only five people <laughs> at the end of the day, um, I know that it's not only going to be five people, but what I'm, what I'm saying is what I'm implying is that there's a specific group of dancers that need to be in the room and you know who you are. And if that's you, go ahead on and get your ticket because September is going to be here before we know it. It's already August you all. So don't, please don't wait to get your tickets. Um, we're going to have refreshments, like we're going to have food, like for those of you who came last year, you know how, how it is, how we had some nourishment after we danced and, and spent our time together. You're going to have materials that you can use for, um, the impartation session, for your notes, all of that good stuff. And some other things. Um, there is a specific giveaway that I want to give out to the first, the first church who registered their entire dance team. And I do, I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to this announcement. I wanted to go ahead on and release it, but I was like, no, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I'm going to wait um, to do so on event day, which is September the 28th. So make sure you're in the room. If you're coming from out of town, I would love to meet you. So many new faces last year. I mean, coming out from different places of North Carolina, which was very surprising to me, by, by the way. So if you're going to be here this year, I look forward to meeting you. We're coming to a close on this challenge. Um, I think next week is probably going to be the last week for this. I'm preparing some things behind the scenes as well. So listen, if you have not subscribed to YouTube and you love these encouraging words, Liturgical Dance Creative TV, listen, go ahead on and subscribe. It's good. It's getting better. God is just doing something phenomenal. He's doing a new thing because I'm now finding myself not just teaching, um, not just dancing, excuse me, but now God is like, having me speak, <laughs> having me teach. And this is very, it's different, but I'm embracing it because God has just been blessing us. And I'm looking forward to our future segments. I'm looking forward to the time that we spend together. And I pray that I see you all next week. All right. If this has blessed you, feel free to comment, share, like, um, and I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Good night.